Most humans, and of course this depends on the time scale that you're looking at, we're not very good at parallel processing. And while you can do, say, look, I do parallel processing from a macro perspective, when I look at a fine time slice, you're doing single tasks and you switch back and forth. Okay? And this is very important because machines could do that much better than us. Okay? That's a little bit a little punch line here. So humans that are indivisible and that work together and they need coordination. Okay. Okay. These are in my field two very important questions we try to answer. I've got this whole process here. This is my box. Patients flow through, there's a throughput. Right. We know that. What we are very much concerned about is trying to figure out how much output can the process generate. So this was an idea, I go to the doctor, okay. I see my primary care physician, I know what I need, but I need to go through this process. So they insist that I come in, I see a nurse, that's resource one, R1, and I see the physician. And both of them are there together with me. You probably have gone through a similar setup. Right? And, you know, the nurse starts typing away, the physician starts asking some questions, taking some vitals, etc., etc. All of that happens here. And this task concluded by the physician saying, like the nurse, let's take a strep test to be sure it's not strep. What happens then? The physician moves on to the next office where there's another kind of patient and he's gone. Okay. <clears throat> then the nurse does the test comes back, etc., etc. When that is done, the physician comes back, looks at the test, says, you're right, you don't have stress, uh, strep. And uh, I said, like, you know, by now I know what I need. It's, it's a certain drug that then I can start speaking, like, after half a day. They always say, like, just be quiet for three days. But I said, I can't do that. I have to teach tomorrow. Right? And then I get my prescription, I get my drug, and I'm fine, and we can continue again. Okay, that's the process. It's kind of important that you can visualize this. The key part here is that I have two types of activities. This is what I call the collaborative activity. Both resources need to be there. These are the individual. Okay. And I could ask you, who's the bottleneck? Because remember, I want to get to the idea of like, what is the maximal number of patients that these two resources can process? What do we do? We look for each resource, how much work they need to spend on one patient. The answer is, the nurse spends two minutes per patient. The numbers here are a little qualified to make it simpler. It takes actually a bit longer. And the doctor spends two minutes. So they're both equally loaded. They're both the bottlenecks, which means that if they need to spend two minutes per patient, how many patients can they see maximally per minute? One every two minutes. How many per hour? 30. Right? That makes sense? So that's exactly uh, the idea. The network capacity then is given by the bottleneck capacity. That's what we always teach in the classroom. I think we've been doing that for I've been doing it for 20 years. I know it's been going on for much longer. Okay. And so this is what we call the fact that and I want to point out here. We simply say that the capacity of the networker of the process is the same as the capacity of the bottleneck. Of course, the process cannot do better than the bottleneck. But I'm going to argue that it's not always the case that you can even get here. Okay. Humans typically will have certain preferences. And we all have our own preferences. Do you prefer to work with others or do you prefer to work your own work? Right? So you may have preferences between the collaborative activity or your individual activity. And if you have multiple patients, you will decide where you prioritize. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's now assume these two individuals prefer their individual work. So, go through this and try to ask yourself, what's going to be, is there anything different from what we discussed here versus once these humans prioritize their own individual tasks? 
In other words, when they do this, what will be the capacity? I'll give you just a moment. I've got a thousand patients waiting here. I start with patient number one. Bring him in here. Where are my two resources? Here. They'd like to work over there, but they don't have a patient there. So they're going to come here. But then when the patient moves over here, what's going to happen with the resources? The nurse will come over here. The doctor kind of disappears. And then when the patient comes over here, the doctor is here. Now what is important is because they prioritize these individual work, even though there's a whole stack of patients here, which they could work on together, they prefer to work on these activities. Right? And what is going to be the end result? You can repeat this whole thing. The best you will do now is process one patient every three minutes. Okay? Every three minutes. So what's happened here is that the capacity of the network suddenly has dropped. Okay? From 30 patients per hour, I'm down now to 20 patients per hour. Okay? And here's something very interesting. Of course, now you can argue, could I have done better? I could have done better. This is purely the result of what I call the policy of what they prioritize. Okay? But I think it's kind of an interesting, I thought this was an interesting observation because this is what happens with people. Right? People make their own decisions. And the point I'm making here, they're doing the same work. Nothing has changed. The only thing that changes what they prefer to work on, what they prioritize. And of course, the more professional the work, the more discretion the person has, and the more choice they have in exercising these kind of decisions. But you could now argue, listen, Jan, surely we could do better, and we could do better, if I could convince everybody that they should prioritize this work. Right? If all the humans in this network prioritize this activity, everything will be as before. So the point I'm making here is this definitely depends on kind of the policy.